in uh, Queens. One of the first phone calls I got was from uh, Officer Amen. He started getting phone calls from that community, that uh, community out in Queens, Bangladeshi community, when they had an incident. They didn't know what happened. Was this a terrorist incident? Was, was this a hate crime? What was going on? A religious leader was just murdered in Queens. So they started to reach out to Officer Amen. So we got together, reached out to the chief, we formulated a plan. We were able to go into that community that community that was a growing community that really didn't have a lot of identified leaders in that community, and we were able to go into that community, reach out to them, and explain to them what the police department was doing. Explain to them about this investigation as it was happening in real time. And we were able to help to soothe that community. Because at that particular time, you can imagine when one of your faith leaders is killed in that manner, you know, what was going on, the panic that was happening not just in that community, but all over the city, but especially in that community, you know, a, a new community um, that happened. And so we're able to work with that community. We're able to bring leaders from the department, you know, to meet with that community. We're able to dispel a lot of rumors, and we're able to help to bring the type of uh, resolution. And especially when that, uh, the perpetrator was arrested, we're able to notify identify stakeholders and really help to help that community in the healing process so i just wanted to uh talk about that incident because it really talks about the relationship that happens between my unit and different members and the clergy and other stakeholders throughout the community so thank you very much no more questions thank you okay thank you don't we have the head of hate crimes here as well do we have him here? Yes. Good morning, uh, Deputy Inspector Mark McGrone. Yes. Commanding the Officer of the NYPD Hate Crime Task Force. Uh, the Hate Crime Task Force, for those of you who don't know, is a uh, citywide unit that operates under the Detective Bureau and underneath the Special Victims Division. And we are assigned to uh, handle any incident within the city that's dedicated, that's deemed possible bias. So, which is a broader term than hate crime to encompass something that could quite possibly be biased that needs to be vetted out. So when an incident occurs, and it is deemed possible bias, uh, it comes to us, we take full investigative responsibility, no matter how serious or trivial the incident may seem to be at the time, if it's, if it's based on one's identity, we handle that case. Um, also, a big portion of what we do in the hate crime task force, our primary mission, of course, is enforcement. However, we do do a fair amount of community outreach. We work very closely with our robust community affairs bureau, as well as the Mayor's Office of Community Affairs. And we get out into the communities and we try to speak and deliver uh, upward of probably four to five presentations a month titled Understanding Hate Crimes, and we also participate in Know Your Rights Forum. We just uh, participated in one this past Saturday in the Greenwich Village area, who is uh, sponsored by the Muslim Community Network, and in participation with uh, CARE, the Center for American Islamic Relations. So uh, we try to uh, engage those groups that feel the need or feel that there is a potential or a rise for hate crimes, uh, whether perceived or real. We do um, make ourselves available to get into those communities and talk about those type of things that occur, um, deliver know your rights type of things, and just let people know that we're out there and where we can be found. We're also, uh, I'm told by our IT people, IT people by the end of the uh, month, there will be a direct link and a hyperlink on the NYPD uh, internet website that will uh, connect you with uh, all of the literature and the hate crime brochures, which will uh, inform individuals how to report hate crimes and, and uh, any incident like that, which uh, someone might not, uh, you know, believe they have the resources to report. You can always call 911. 311 will route you directly to the hate crime task force, but the local precinct is a great place to start. Um, in speaking about hate crimes, in the Bronx, uh, in particular, I'm happy to report we're down 27% in overall bias incidents um, for a year to date, 2016. Which is, uh, uh, as we said earlier, you know, even one crime is is very serious and not to be trivialized. Certainly, in the, considering hate crimes, um, you know, one crime is very, very serious, and uh, not only does it affect an individual or individual lives who are directly affiliated with that crime, there's also a concept of group victimization where that crime infects into uh, entire communities and exasperates to it, you know, affect large, large groups of people. So that's why we do uh, recognize the extreme seriousness of that. Um, in addition to being down 27% in overall bias incidents within the Bronx, the arrests are up 
So in a scenario where um, you know the hate crimes are going down, the arrests are going up, if we have to accept even one hate crime until I see zeros on that page, I will not be satisfied. Uh, but it, that is a good scenario in terms of the proportionate uh, ratio of the numbers. Thank you so very Thank much. You. And we're winding down in time, and I only going to have one a time for one more question, um, and that's for housing. We want to bring back housing, um, please, back to serve the development. Um, assigned to on the premises need to view camera tapes frequently not just for crimes um, They made a comment that they fought too hard and long not to view to confirm evidence of vandalism, etc So housing managers shouldn't pass their responsibility to others. So I know we have the person that's head of housing here and so um, Would you just comment on that? Just I hope I did not hand it off to uh, Eddie Lott, who was the PSA, uh, oh, PSA commander of PSA 8. But uh, as you know, we have the, uh, the Housing Bureau and it's, uh, with the merger in 1995, the transit housing and the NYPD. It is a bureau now. So in the Bronx here, we have uh, PSA 7, PSA 8. But we also have uh, housing that comes under the, uh, the purview of the, uh, the local uh, precinct. I believe five precincts, the 4-9 is one here, the 4-7, we fall under PSA 8. But um, some of these commands have uh, Viper systems where we have offices uh, situated in a room monitoring these cameras. There's other uh, developments that do not have Viper, but most of them do have some kind of camera system. So there's scale. a plan to expand and it then? They, they, when, when something occurs, they, uh, we, we go there and, and certainly review the uh, tape. And I know NYCHA is certainly uh, looking for funds to expand that. Uh, you know, okay. the, the camera cameras to wonder, but I'd like to give it over to uh, Okay. Expect a lot now. Yes, and we have about, about a precise. minute to address that, and we're getting close to the um, cut off to minute time. Uh, the chief said we're actually looking to expand Viper and other PD capabilities in all developments. Okay. Um, there are housing developments that are, don't come under the view of housing, they come under control. Um, my old command, we actually had a great deal of uh, a great relationship with the PSA, and we worked jointly. We didn't kind of look at it as something that was separate and distinct. They were all part of my community and one I command. It wasn't housing or transit. They were all part of the 7 7, which I was the CEO of. And when I was the CEO of PSA 8, I had a great relationship with 4 3 and 4 7. So. Okay, so the expansion is on the way. And so that's what we wanted to ask. And so as we wind down, um, as we did the first time we got together, we do have to ask of you. And one is. Um, I, I have one of you, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's great. I love it. Um, the first ask is um, they have wanted to be able to duplicate this as we shared, uh, maybe look on the calendar to do something actually in New York City, more broad based, more interactive with uh, those that are part of, you know, your, your staff. And to create that intentional partnership, the meeting greets with the different commands and doing something on a, on a larger basis than today, you're open to that. Not a problem. Okay, second ask is, uh, would you be willing to work with the community to ensure that the forfeiture funds make it back to the community under a genuine justice reinvestment package? Um, this would require NYPD, DA, and community um, stakeholders uh, to be part of a task force that discusses this and makes recommendations. We are aware that NYPD controls the front end and DA the back end. This does not exist in our city, and with NYPD saying yes would help our efforts. We, we can have a conversation about that. Okay, <laughs> we'll do. What's your ask of my, my ask for you is that uh, on December 27th, we had a, a filing open up for a police officer. So the test, if you file for the test, you can take it in January. I ask that uh, everybody uh, reach out to the young people in their community and, and get them to take the test. This is still uh, the best job in the world. It's a job where you can definitely make a difference every day. And if you want to uh, make the change, you got to be the change. Okay, thank you so very much. And right before we end, I'm going to give you your call to action. Uh, the commission is going to be doing a Q&A with the press right after this, um, right in the back. And so the call to action, can you just move it manually so we can move that out? I am so challenged with this stuff. I don't even know where I'm supposed to be pointing it. This is like, do I point it here? I'm just, where do I point this? Where do to action for people of faith? Know your local command? 
Open up your houses of worship as places of refuge to hold mediations, discussions, and information exchange. Encourage your parishioners to be civically engaged in community affairs. Continue to be the voices of reason for the people and represent their issues accordingly. Adopt a healing perspective. Build bridges, don't burn. Adopt a healing perspective and integrate all that in all aspects of our spiritual work. That is our call to action. Thank you and God bless. We're gonna have a closing prayer over our those that are here. And thank you again, everyone, for coming. Thank you, Commissioner. And so can we stand as we get ready for our closing prayer? Two minutes over and I'm hyperventilating.